putting 3D in the hands of more people. Uh, you think of also the gaming generation, they grew up with 3D. At the age of five months, we're able to perceive 3D. Everyone has a GPS device on their phone. Everyone has a Google Immersive View, right? Professionals in the field now have tablets instead of drawings so that they can walk through a building or walk through an infrastructure project um, and experience a thing in real 3D. So it's not just the people creating the 3D content now that are the users, it's all the people consuming the 3D content, and I think that's what's changed. We could also ask, why has it taken this long for 3D to happen? I think from a technology firm's point of view and from Autodesk who's been developing 3D for you know over 30 years, um, it's putting it in the hands of more people, both the professionals as well as the general public. You know, people now have so many devices in which they can stream 3D information. It's becoming absolutely ubiquitous. AEC really needs to invest natively in R&D. Uh, it's it's an, a market that typically borrows in terms of production methodologies from other industries, but it has very unique problems. It has unique problems of scale, unique problems of economy, and the fact that every building that's built is essentially a one-off design. So it's very difficult to borrow and adopt technologies coming from aerospace or automotive where the economics are entirely different. We need more native investment, more native investment in production methods, of how we actually fabricate our structures, also native investment in um, the methods and monitoring and measurement of those methods. Well, what you're seeing now is a conflation of hardware and software. It's very difficult to innovate in one area without innovating in the other. And, you know, you've heard Carl, Carl Bass say frequently that people rarely design something without the intent to make the thing. So extending the design technology onto the construction site or onto the manufacturing floor is a natural extension of what we do. And going full circle, pulling in reality data into the design software, because rarely are you starting from a blank slate, right? You're either building on an existing site, you're building a component that attaches to something else, it's all connected. So have the entire ecosystem of reality to design to physical production is what we see as the extended ecosystem at Autodesk. I think you're already seeing some elements of what you say referred to as crew sourcing happening uh, within enterprises. Companies are starting to use crowdsourcing methods to drive new innovation and ideas. And I like the idea of actually capturing knowledge from crews in the field and capturing best practices. And I think that's one area where we need a lot more development. And we're starting to think about, but um, how do you mine the intelligence coming from professional crews in the field to augment uh, future work? I think we have more data than humans can consume, but that's why we need to develop the machine intelligence to actually process the data and give us effective and useful, actionable information. Um, obviously, the, the amount of data that we're gonna consume is going to increase exponentially. And the only feasible method is to invest into artificial intelligence to help to make some of those decisions, figure out what is valuable in that data, what we need to know in order to make a human decision about a path forward. Well, obviously these uh, feats of acrobatics are used by the roboticists and the technology providers to show how agile and how deft robots can be, because historically they've been quite clunky, especially in industrial robotics. Uh, they haven't had the dexterity of the human hand, and by them showing robots doing ballet or robots manipulating small uh, components,
they're trying to express the fact that the evolution has been uh, immense. Even though we're not seeing humanoid robots on the street walk around with us, I think they want to express the fact that a lot of development has taken place and uh, we can expect to see some interesting things in the future. Well, actually I think uh, there's a, a lot of research now showing that a large quantity of data, statistically derived, gives you better results than a few points that we deem as precise. Right? And there's also an inherent bias for us to think of a point of data as being precise. But if you really look into the, the tenets of the information that you know and that you don't know, I think we often find that it, it doesn't have the validity that we used to think it did. And the one thing that always reigns supreme, I mean, quantum mechanics shows us this, is statistical probability.